we move through the Genesis narrative, we come to the latter part of Genesis chapter 13 and the beginning or the latter part of Genesis 14. Uh, We've had Abraham and Lot uh, through the narratives split their their family and uh, entourages into areas as uh, uh, Lot has moved with his family and and group uh, down into the area of the Jordan Valley down near the Dead Sea, what is often called the Kirkar of the Jordan, the realm of the Jordan River that's just on the north side of the Dead Sea. Uh, recent excavations, we think that uh, uh, a site called Tel Hamam and other sites in the area, that this was the area of Sodom, Gomorrah, and perhaps some of the others. We do know that Adama was north of there, uh, one of the cities of the plain, as described in Genesis chapter 14. So, we move from the realm of the, uh, God's blessing of Abraham uh, with uh, certain capabilities. We have the, uh, in the verses that you will not be translating in Genesis 14, the first 16 verses, this invading group comes from Mesopotamia uh, into the Jordan Valley, uh, taking Lot and his and many of his family uh, captive and also taking a lot of the spoils of war from the region of Sodom and Gomorrah, again this northern section above the Dead Sea. And Abraham uh, with his uh, financial capability is able to assemble an army and go and rescue Lot and defeat these Mesopotamian kings and bring back that uh, spoils of war that they had captured and taken heading north. So somewhere up in the region of Dan, Abraham defeats these Mesopotamian armies and comes back into the land. And we come to that unique and special passage about Melchizedek, the latter part of Genesis chapter 14. Melchizedek is a rather enigmatic character. We don't know exactly much about him other than he is a priest and king of the Most High God. And... It is the one to whom Abraham will pay a tithe, the customary tenth of the material that has been gained through the spoils of war in his defeat of the Mesopotamian armies. All of the rest of the material, of course, will be restored to the owners of Sodom, Gomorrah, Lot's family, and others in the region. Abraham keeps nothing for himself, only that which is able to feed the the, the necessary uh, Uh, food supply and other needs that his army would have on this journey and the uh, process of defeating their enemies. Nothing is kept for himself. A good motto to understand that all of it uh, belongs to God and Abraham keeps nothing for himself as he is a man who has been blessed. But the unique experience in the encounter with Melchizedek, Melchizedek of course in subsequent history will continue to be an enigmatic character. In understanding uh, of the later passages in biblical texts, in Psalm 110, for example, it describes a new order of priesthood, uh, that which will carry forth into the New Testament in writing such as the book of Hebrews. But we'll explore Melchizedek through this journey in Genesis chapter 14. (music) 